afternoon, sir. Josh Arnold, Stem Cell News. Uh, I just want to ask a quick question. Do you know where stem cells come from? Well, they come from babies, right? What is a stem cell? The term stem cell is really quite broad, and there are many different types of stem cells. The type of stem cell that has received the most attention in recent years is the embryonic stem cell. Embryonic stem cells were first discovered and isolated in mice, and it took scientists another 17 years to identify similar cells in humans. Since that time, many scientists have been studying embryonic stem cells to better understand how normal human development takes place. And there's been much speculation about the potential of embryonic stem cells for curing human diseases. During normal human development, after an egg is fertilized, it begins to replicate forming a small cluster of cells known as morula. Several rounds of cell division result in an early embryonic structure called a blastocyst, containing roughly 64 to 200 cells, most of which form the walls of a small sphere. Inside this small sphere is a group of cells known as the inner cell mass. It is these inner cell mass cells that can be isolated and grown in a tissue culture dish as what we call embryonic stem cells. But what makes embryonic stem cells so special? We define a stem cell by its two most unique features, self-renewal and pluripotency. Self-renewal refers to the ability of one stem cell to generate more stem cells indefinitely. The other feature, pluripotency, is perhaps the most exciting feature of a stem cell. This means that stem cells are capable of becoming any cell type within the body. Unlike your heart cells or your brain cells that are destined to be heart or brain cells until they die, stem cells and especially embryonic stem cells have the potential to become gut cells, brain cells, heart cells, or any other cell type in your body. This process of becoming a certain cell type is known as differentiation. In a developing embryo, self renewal and pluripotency are critical for the formation of a viable organism. In the tissue culture dish, self renewal and pluripotency are the features that we study and exploit when using stem cells to understand normal development and as we think about using stem cells to treat disease. I just wanted to ask you a basic question about stem cells. Okay. Um, can you tell me what they're used for? Uh, uh, the clone sheep and humans and stuff? Do I look like a scientist? Why are stem cells important? There are three main purposes to using and studying stem cells in the lab. The first is to understand normal development. By studying the development of individual cells without the complexity of an entire embryo, researchers can ask and answer the most basic questions about the requirements for and processes that take place during normal human development. The second purpose is to understand disease. For example, Improper function of neural cells can result in brain diseases such as Parkinson's and Alzheimer's. It is difficult to study these human diseases in animal models, but the diseases can be modeled at a cellular level in neural cells grown from stem cells, allowing scientists to study the disease process in a controlled environment rather than in the complex surrounding of the brain. The third purpose of using and studying stem cells is for drug discovery and regenerative medicine. This is considered the future of stem cell biology. Researchers envision that once diseases are carefully modeled and studied using stem cells, drug therapies could be designed, tailored, and tested for their effectiveness at curing a variety of ailments on the exact disease cells they are meant to treat. Uh, can you just tell me what you know about stem cells? Um, I don't know, I think they cure everything. Stem cells may hold this potential, but what is the ideal stem cell to use for curing diseases? So, so the question people often raise is, what is the ideal cell type that should be used for regenerative medicine? And if you think about the things that one would want, you want a cell to be able to be introduced into a patient and be incorporated into the appropriate organ that you're trying to repair, uh, and you want this to become a widely acceptable practice. And so that requires that you, one start with a cell that can turn into any of the 200 and 
12 different cell types of the human body. And so that's what we call a pluripotent stem cell that has the capacity to turn into anything. So that's certainly one thing that we like in the, the ideal uh, stem cell. The second thing is that uh, just like organ transplants, there's a concern that if you introduced foreign cells into a patient, that the body would recognize those as different and reject them uh, using their immune system. And so a cell that was genetically identical to the patient that we're trying to, to treat would be ideal. And the third thing that we would obviously love to have in the ideal stem cell uh, is that it be widely acceptable to the public for use. And this gets to the issue of the um, vigorous ethical debate that has ensued over the last uh, 10 years regarding embryonic stem cells and the issue of having to destroy a five-day-old fertilized egg, essentially, uh, or an embryo, in order to make human embryonic stem cells. Is there a stem cell type that meets all the criteria of an ideal stem cell? So the recent discovery of uh, what are known as induced pluripotent stem cells, or sometimes called IPS cells, uh, may in fact address many of these considerations uh, regarding the ideal stem cell. Generation of these cells does not require creation of a human embryo. Because we can go directly from an adult skin cell to a stem cell that's pluripotent, it essentially bypasses both the creation of a human embryo and bypasses the ethical issues uh, that have raised so much concern uh, in this country and around the world. There are many steps that have to occur before that would be available for the public as therapies, and those include uh, being able to turn these cells efficiently into the cell type desired for the repairs, uh, finding ways to introduce them properly into patients and having them get incorporated uh, into the organ of choice, uh, and, uh, and then doing so safely uh, and making sure that these cells don't do things that we don't want them to do after they're introduced, like making tumors or going to places and turning into things that we don't want them to turn into. And so the, the scientific field is uh, aggressively tackling all of these uh, hurdles. And I'm confident that uh, over the next decade, we will have addressed many of these things. Well, so. As you think about almost every disease of the human body, there's potential for stem cell base therapies to address those and alleviate human suffering. It's only going to happen if we have really creative, bright people who commit themselves to this mission and train themselves to be in a position to ask the questions and answer them over the next several decades. And we'll be relying on the next generation of scientists and physicians to carry this vision out over the next several decades.